With graphics card prices being ridiculous right now, I thought I'd make a video just explaining a basic how to try to get your graphics card working from start to finish. And what I got given here at, when I was on a used PC parts hunt was a 7770. This is an old AMD graphics card now that was released actually quite a long time ago, pretty much over a decade ago. And I was told it just didn't work. And then there's a GTX 970 here as well that I got given and the person said it doesn't work. You can have it and try and get it working again. And so I thought to myself, why not just take you guys through the steps that I do, essentially a process of elimination to see if this graphics card has completely gone or if there's any signs of getting it to work again. And what we're gonna do is straight away is start off with a graphics card and a test bed that we know that works. And this is important because then that rules out any other problems and then we can identify that it's actually the GPU that's the problem. So let's get on with this tutorial and see if we can get two graphics cards to come back to life. Today's video is brought to you by the ASRock Z590 Tai Chi with support for 10th and 11th gen CPUs featuring the new game port technology separating your mouse and keyboard packets as well as having a 14 phase VRM onboard RGB control from the BIOS USB 3.2 Gen 2 featuring up to 20 gigabits per second. This board is not only guaranteed to get you maximum FPS but also make you drool. Links in description below. So we've got our first GPU up here and we can see that our test bench is working absolutely fine. So this is important to make sure that if we test a graphics card going forward, that there's nothing else in the pipeline that is wrong. So now we can put our first GPU in that was uh, given to me that was faulty to see if we can actually get any initial signs of life out of it. And I've got a few tricks for doing this. So here's the first card here, the 7770, and we can see here by the BIOS code, we are getting to the BIOS screen. This is what the A9 means. Uh, if you don't have a BIOS code, you can use a little speaker and plug that in, and that should give you some um, beep codes to let you know if flat out the VGA card is failing. On this board, it'll give you a B2 error if the card itself is stopping from booting into BIOS. And now another problem we've got here is that we've tried the HDMI port and we've tried also one little trick that I always use and that is to try and get a D, uh, VGA out on older cards uh, from the 10 series and onwards on Nvidia side. And I forgot which AMD implementation, but they did remove VGA support in the newer cards. So this trick won't work in some newer uh, cards, but on older cards, sometimes it's only the HDMI scaler that blows out and you can still have a signal coming out to a VGA cable, hence you've still got a usable graphics card. But in this case, we got something a little bit more wrong with this GPU. So now we're gonna try the GTX 970 because the next step involves us taking the card apart. So this card right here, the GTX 970, we tried booting this up and the computer wouldn't even boot, meaning that there's actually a serious problem in terms of power delivery. So both these cards that we've started off this video with are now going to have to be pulled apart. Also one more thing in terms of power delivery problems, do be careful if you have uh, this sort of issue, especially if you see some kind of fire or weird smell coming off from the graphics card, then you may wish to uh, just stop right there because basically when cards have power delivery problems, like in the case of this GTX 970, it can actually end up causing uh, problems to other parts, other PC parts, if the power supply does spike or something shorts out. So do be very careful if you know something's really off and the computer doesn't even boot up, like in this case with this GTX 970 to begin with.
So now we've just taken these two graphics cards apart and it's looking like it's at least some decent news so far and that when I've taken these cards apart and just cleaned them down quickly with an alcohol wipe, I haven't noticed any part that looks physically damaged. But I did notice in the case of this GTX 970 that there's a lot of debris uh, just floating around. And so cleaning out your graphics card can, if, especially in the case of this 970, I'm hopeful for it because it can be something could be shorting out and stopping the card from booting. And also on this 7770, there's no obvious signs of physical damage. So what we're gonna do now is actually give it a second clean now with the multi-purpose spray. And this is essentially just gonna get any extra debris off as well as just coat some of the electronics with a protective layer. So one thing I will say though, is if you're at this stage and you notice that something's obviously wrong, say for instance, one of these little uh, SMDs here is uh, chipped off or it looks like it's just completely rusted and corroded off, then you may have to either do two things. And that is one, if you're really good at micro soldering and you can get a voltmeter and replace the faulty part, then you can bring that graphics card back to life. Or two, take it to an electronics store and get them to fix it for you. Now in Australia, unfortunately for these last two things we just discussed, A, I'm terrible at micro soldering. So that's out the window for me. If I tried to fix this thing, I'd be here for days and it just wouldn't be worth my time. And even then, there's no guarantee that it'll work again. And then for point B, fixing these cards professionally in Australia will cost a lot more than the actual cards even worth. And so with my micro soldering skills, I'm pretty much only at the level where I can solder two wires together. And some would say in the comments that, hey, Brian, you don't even do a great job of that. But uh, coupled with the fact that in Australia, these kinds of services do cost a lot of money, especially when these cards are out of warranty, you're kind of left at the end of the road if one of these parts is damaged. But since I don't see any physical signs, we're gonna continue on and see what we can do with these two GPUs. So now these graphics cards are finally clean, we're gonna be putting some new thermal paste and just dabbing that quickly on there, a little bit extra because you wanna make sure that the GPU die is always covered fully. So it's not a bad thing to use a little bit of extra thermal paste in this phase. Um, but also keep in mind that you don't use a conductive or capacitive thermal paste. So I found something like MX4 or even off Aliexpress GD900 is absolutely fine, especially if you're on a budget. Now, one thing you'll see me do is I'm cleaning, um, I'll spray the multi-purpose spray on, and since it's an oil-based solution, I then use a little alcohol wipe to clean off that bit on the die, because this has to make contact with the cooler. And I just use my shirt because I'm a little bit of a bogan. In Australia, a bogan is just a bogan. I'll put the Google definition up on the screen here for you guys, so you can check that out. And using your shirt to clean things shouldn't be a problem unless, of course, you've just finished uh, maybe cooking some burgers down at Hungry Jack's. I think you guys overseas call it Burger King. Uh, if you've got a lot of oil on your shirt, then yeah, you might wanna change your shirt before you clean the Gravis cards. But let's put these things back together and we're only going to use a little bit, of, we're gonna use two screws. So we're gonna put this back together and put it in at a diagonal. And the reason I'm doing this is because if the graphics card doesn't work again, then we're gonna to go to our last resort method. And that isn't, it's like, that's the last resort because it's the last resort. After that, I pretty much just, um, I pretty much just uh, give these graphics cards away to people who wanna have a crack locally at fixing them, uh, as I've got no real need for them anymore. But you'll see here, I'll just quickly put down one screw on the diagonal just there and then another screw on the diagonal 
And this is just for testing. So if the graphics card works after this, I can put the whole thing back together and we'll all be good to go. But this part here is a little bit different with the MSI one. Now, I'm leaving this out, especially in this case, because we had power delivery issues. I'm gonna leave this bracket off. And if you've got a back plate as well, I suggest leaving that off for this phase too, because what we wanna see is um, if we've got a problem with the actual uh, GPU itself. So leaving as much as we can off just for the initial boot phase is gonna save us a bit of headache. So hopefully these two cards will give out a signal now and that's uh, fingers crossed. Now also another thing is too, when I before putting this on the test bench again to test it up, uh, the inputs and outputs on this 7770 here looks absolutely fine. So we're gonna leave that one alone. But this one here, you'll notice, if we look at the camera closely, there's a little bit of rust, especially in this HDMI port. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, make this graphics card's HDMI port a little bit happy and start jerking it. And hopefully if that was the issue, then we might have fixed it. Now, another thing we can do before we put this uh, PCIe finger into the slot is we can check it with a, um, a rubber and if it's corroded or it's showing signs of uh, just maybe a finger's missing or something like that, showing signs of damage, we can uh, try and just rub this rubber over it and just give it a clean. So rub, just rub this finger down and clean it a bit. So we failed miserably two out of two times there. And look, at least when you come to Tech Air City, you're gonna get straight up transparency. I'm not here to beat you guys around the bush. I'm like, I mean, this, I've seen some tutorials in the past, I'm not gonna name which, and it's like, yeah guys, we oven baked 10 GPUs and all 10 of them are working again, and they don't even show you any proof. And it's like, well, how am I meant to trust some random guy on the internet I've never met before? Like that's a recipe for success, isn't it? But what we're gonna do now is just clean up these GPUs right here. I'm just gonna give them another little quick clean up, especially around the uh, GPU die area where we just uh, put some fresh thermal paste on. And now we're gonna get a heat gun and we are going to bake both of these GPUs for around five minutes. And I say five minutes this time around because we know the problematic areas. In this case, this is the area here. This, uh, one of these MOSFETs, I believe, is a little bit faulty, so maybe giving it a heat gun at some really high temperatures could fix that. In this case, this 7770 right here is definitely a scalar issue because the card makes it to the BIOS. So hopefully heat gunning this area on this card and heat gunning this area here can hopefully, fingers crossed, can either get one of these two cards to get a signal back to life. And here we are now at conclusion time with two graphics cards that didn't work before we came into this and they still don't work after. But that being said, this is the whole process that I do around Tech Yes City from start to finish. And I thought I'd make it all in one video in order to show you guys what I do 
to give these cards the best chance they have at working again. Now you may have seen in the final attempt to try and get some life out of these cards, I did put it also in the bottom slot, which is a PCI4X slot. So there are things you can try like this to just get some life out of these cards. Though during any of these steps, if you manage to get a signal out of your GPU, but it's a weird signal in that the card still isn't working 100%. Say for instance, you have some pixelated blocks showing up on your monitor, or there's just weird lines and random patterns going through, then there is one more thing you can try, or actually two more things. And that is the first thing is to get a program called, uh, download this, it's called MSI Afterburner. I'll put the links in the description below, and then drop your memory and core clocks all the way down and then save that and then restart the computer and that might fix your problem. If it does, then it just means that your graphics card hardware, more specifically the VRAM or the GPU core has degraded to the point where it can no longer function at the stock speeds. Another thing you can also try is reflashing the VBIOS if you do have these sort of weird lines and pixelated blocks coming up. And after that, you pretty much have to get the card repaired or you can just give up on it. But there is one cool thing I like to do with graphics cards after I'm finished with them, if they're still not working. And that is I take the coolers off and I use all these screws for say a graphics card in the future that comes in and it might have a broken fan and then I've got one here that works absolutely fine. So I can then use this one on the broken cooler and then have a card that functions 100%. So that's something that you can still do with cards that aren't functioning properly from the PCB and the GPU itself. Though with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If there's any other steps or tricks that you've got of your own and you wanna share them, because let's face it, right now, I think a lot of people would just like to play games and they can't afford to because the prices of GPUs have just gone through the roof. And so in this current state, it just, I think there's gonna be a lot more people trying to get stuff that didn't work to work again. And so this is just one of those guides that you can follow and maybe it helps someone out there get a bit of a better gaming experience, especially if they're, for instance, on an old HD graphics CPU from Intel, then this would definitely help if they could get a card working and play some games. But with that aside, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And with that aside, we do have the question of the day here, which comes from Jeffrey Desmorek. And they asked, does anyone have any idea how to fix a memory slot that isn't working? My Z390 Ace motherboard has two memory slots that aren't working after taking apart my PC and changing out the water cooling fluid. Edit, I did not see any signs of water on the motherboard. I hope brake cleaner will fix it. So I usually find with motherboards when it comes to memory slots not working, the first thing you can do is try and clean out the memory slots with indeed some brake cleaner or a brush and some multi-purpose spray, but make sure if you're using brake cleaner that's all dried out, whether you use a uh, some hot air or you use, for instance, a data vac to make sure the brake cleaner is blown out. But another thing I've tried, and this is the most common problem I find with memory slots, is that the uh, pins on the CPU, especially if it's an LGA socket, the pins are actually have what's called a micro bend. And so if you can clean either the tips of the pins or just very carefully, and do be very careful if you decide to do this, very carefully caress the pins and sort of try to just micro bend them back. Obviously take a quick look at the board and make sure there's no obvious pins that are bent. But if you do this properly, and I'll link you to a video where I've done this, then you can bring memory slots back to life. And this is something I've done in the past numerous times and it's worked very well. So hopefully that answers that question. And if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, then be sure to hit that sub button and ring that bell and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.